come this way with it. Keep it as close to here as you can. Get the control station out of there. Easiest way to do it is basically show. If you got this side down, okay, so you can take it down and just set it off like this. Ah, uh, yeah. You set it off just like that, and you just set it up like that. Rock it up. It's on wheels. Rock it up out of the way. So pull it right out. Here okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. The Sprinter Mobile is the official name for it. Um, new response to making a Sprinter for early 90s, maybe even late 80s. I think it was originally called the Sprinter because it was a little fast lift. Been with New Spawn since 1999. So when I was hired, there was myself and we had a company in Minnesota. Clark, Dave Fisher owns it and his wife, Jan. Um, they started in 1985, 86, bringing the product in. Uh, hired me in 1999 for the first 14 years. I was the only, other than Dave being a distributor, I was the only employee they had in the country. So that's why I've kind of become more of a technical guy. Pull this off of here. These are your pivots to put your ramps on it. So we'll put those over here for a little bit later use. Um, get these out of here. These are our ramps we'll have to have. So where are the lifts manufactured today? Uh, still in Boderswire, Germany. Okay. This one, this one's still a German. Even though we have the plant in North Carolina, this is one we still, it's still made in Germany and the main plant that, that basically Auto Nussbaum started as a, it was a machine shop. Okay. Hans Nussbaum graduated from engineering school in 1969 and came in and said, we need to make our own lift because they were making parts for lifts for another company. Oh, really? Okay. So, so they started, so they were, they uh, started making their own lift. A yeah. part supplier at the time and decided to make their own. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, do you have just a razor knife and we're going to get this plastic yeah, absolutely. Kind, of, kind of out of our way. And then the next thing we'll probably need, if you've got a little ball peen or actually a bigger ball peen or a little two pound or we're going to knock the... A dead, a dead blow or a big guy? Big guy. So yeah, I just happened to just watch this week, caught the, uh, the episode with Matt on doing the, uh, that was a jumbo, correct? Jumbo, that was, that was, was that a jumbo seven or jumbo nine? That was the seven. Jumbo that's seven, the, okay. That's Which the, is the full rise, correct? The, the full rise, yes. Okay. Basically, it lifts 78 inches. This one's half of it, it lifts 39 inches. Okay. So pretty much that's the difference between the two. And that one being, this one being totally portable because it only lifts 39 inches. Okay. That one you have to bolt down because when you get a car six foot in the air. Yeah, I was going to say you, uh, you start to get those lever arms pretty far up in the air. Just to be a little bit more unstable at that point. Yeah. No, that makes sense. What we're going to do now is we're going to just bust this right off of here. Watch the German wood, it's great for splinters. I was gonna say, those uh, Germ German nails in there too, as well. But it burns really well in your, in your fire, <laughs> so you can have a nice little black forest fire. Oh, there we for, go. For a little ambiance once you, that works. once you get everything said and done. So. Oh, we'll have, uh, we've got a little bit of winter get together coming up here at the shop, so we'll have to, uh, have to take advantage of that. Now granted, if you have a different way to get it out, like something to lift this, that's gonna be the recommended way. What which, you, which we do today, but uh, we had talked about doing it the uh, doing it the old school way for everybody to kind of see how you can do it without having to have heavy equipment like some of us do. Most people don't have a forklift handy or anything like this. If a lift gate drops this thing off, if he if the truck driver's got a uh, a pallet jack on him, have wheel that sucker which, in just like we just did. What you want to try to do is have him wheel it in and get it in a nice open area. Keeping in mind, this is the reference of the lift. It's either going to go that way or it's going to come this way. Sure, makes off, sense. Off of the thing. What I, the reason I took this side off 
because the hoses are up here, this is the front side of the lift. Okay. So the cylinders are literally attached here and they go back to like right in here. So this is also the heavy side of the lift. Okay. And this so is, is this this is what they refer to on uh, as far as where you keep your CG and stuff. Is that the bearing side? Yes, is that the correct exactly the fixed right. bearing? That's the fixed bearing side. Two thirds, okay. one third. You want to make sure because when it gets up and we'll show you, but you know, the slider blocks start here and they move to all the way up to here. Okay. And when they do, your center of gravity is halfway between where it's fixed on the front and where your slider blocks come to. Makes sense. And that's unsupported. Okay. So that's why you want to keep your stuff up there. So what we're going to do here is if you have a two before or anything like that. Handy, I saw this at Matt's, the, uh, the fancy, fancy levers, they work all the time. It is. Um, probably what I just did there, I kind of messed up because I can't get under that. I bet I can get right here. You just got to find somewhere to get you a little bit of a leverage on it to where you can start pushing it out. And I don't know if I'm going to do that on this or not, because I'm kind of, I'm kind of cavitating here real quick. There it goes a little bit. So just uh, slowly going to work it out there. Well, for anyone, that, for anyone to watch that thing, and I said there's a tool yeah. in Matt's install, and, <laughs> and then he quickly cut to something else. This is that tool that That's I just awesome. happened to have with me. So, but we should be able to get it under here. And as little at a time, it will start moving forward. I'm assuming me pulling does no good at all. No, not really. Nope. Yeah, that's a big boy. Uh, what's the uh, what's the weight on this guy? As kind of as shipped. Shipping weight is about 1,200 pounds. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. And heavy. So you're looking at 100 pounds worth of wood, and yeah, and, and everything else is what you're moving here. So that adds up. Let me grab a. Uh, I'll grab. It's another. kind of a slow process, but it it will eventually go to where you want it to go, and then once it gets off the end of the crate, gravity will take over. And I don't know if you want to put, if you want to put something down on the floor there in case you've got an epoxy floor or something that this could, that this could, you know, scratch up. You want to drop it down on a moving blanket? Will that work? No, that would be fine. The places that are going to hit are going to be, yeah, here and there. So I don't know if you have two of them or not. Yep, we'll grab a second. That'll work. I'll wait till you get back with that. we won't be on the moving blanket. Oops, oh well, it'll work. So now let's see if we can, let you and I grab on this side, try to get under here. Ready, one, two, three. Yep. Oh, yep. One more. How there. much did that crate weigh? Yeah. And there it is. And voila, we're on the floor. Well, no need for heavy equipment, just a buddy. Let's uh, just move this back out of the way here. Get it out of our, use your legs for lifting. That's right. These are your hoses that come off the front end. Again. Those got some pretty good length to them. Yeah, they about, do. About nine foot maybe, nine or 10 feet. I think the probably meter, a sorry, probably in meter. They're probably, they're probably, probably, a meter. Up, probably a three meter hose. Three meter say. hose, there you go. For those of you at home, that's probably gonna be just under 10 foot, nine point. Uh, my uh, mathematician friends will correct me. Nine point some odd feet. 39 point some yeah. per, 39 point some inches per meter. This is our control station. So we're gonna hook this baby up. And the first thing they do is they run the power cord all the way up through the top side of it. So the okay. first thing we have to do Feed is run all the way, all back way down through to the, the bottom, bottom side. Yeah. Well, so, I assume that's to uh, keep it from getting damaged maybe in shipping. Yeah. I need any uh, tool or anything to get out no, the back side there? No, just got to go like this and then reach in here like this. Yeah, that's a clean, definitely a clean looking uh, station. It's very, very, very nice. I see a lot of them with, uh, you know, the pumps and everything else exposed. I always wonder why they can't throw a little piece of sheet metal on them just to you know, try to make them look halfway decent. Now don't make the mistake 
of running it through this hole and then wiring your cord up on it, your, your cord cap. It won't fit back through that Because it won't fit back through here then. So <laughs> make sure everything goes through the place it's supposed to go through the first time. So these are our hydraulic hoses. We're gonna take and run these up through here. Same location. Same okay. location. And if you could, I'm gonna shove these through up to the top. If you could grab them up there. Just kind of see when they come through and try to fish them through just a little bit. They should be starting to come that way somewhere. I don't feel them yet. Oh, there we go. You find them? Yep. There they are. I gotta get a little bit more slack here. A little more room on them. Good old non-flexible yeah. hydraulic hoses. Oh yeah, double braid. How far? Uh, how far you need on these? Uh, Just a little bit further. Okay, nope. All right. There we go. That should be good. Now we'll set this back up. So we are still cheating for the users at home because we obviously have Byron with a couple of little years of experience behind him. So. So what you have is basically you have two hoses because you have a left and right cylinder. We'll put, this is the up and down switch that will get mounted in the, in the cover here in a little bit. These are your two control valves. Okay, so you have an A cylinder and you have a B cylinder. Okay. Um, any, any matter which one goes which or? Makes no difference, but the safety on this, unlike a lot, a lot of lifts on the market, most all, that have this setup, they basically take a pump, they come out of the pump with their pressure line. Yep. They put a T in it. They mm. want run one to one. Yeah, directly off of a single outlet, okay. You blow a hose. You're draining both, everything's going down. You lost all hydraulic pressure. This on the other hand, if I went right below where I'm gonna hook these on, there's two check valves in here. Okay. One way check valves, just like any hydraulic bottle jack has, just like a service jack has a roll around. Sure. You pump the fluid into the, past the check valve, the ball comes back in seats, it stays there. Yeah, unless you have a catastrophic failure. Well, unless the ball doesn't yeah, seat. That's so, yeah. so what you have, you had that twice here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook these up. Makes no difference again, left side, right side, they're gonna have a little residual oil in it because this was tested before it ever left the factory. Awesome. Grab you, uh, keep your hands clean. We can clean up the rest. Luckily the, uh, this, uh, this floor we've had treated with a, a custom non-surface sealer, so it's all underneath, doesn't make it slick, so. But it also repels oil and everything else. So these are 17 millimeter, which I believe is also 11 sixteenths. Yep, 11 sixteenths, you need a 17 I've or? I've got it right here. Awesome. Doesn't take very many tools to put it together. No, I was gonna say, uh, again, even, uh, even the way we got it, you're right, if you had somebody just have your guy uh, bring it in on the lift truck and make sure that he uh, used his hand cart to get it inside. Now, there's one thing too I have to mention. There are some of these that have come on that on this side, they have quick connectors for these hoses. Okay. Okay, so the, the top never comes shipped on it. So this is always off. You have, to put, you have to put the switches up into the top. Okay. And then put the top on. Um, that being said, so is that an option that you guys offer? Or? It is, but I prefer, because in the time that we've had quick connect hoses out, I've never seen anyone disconnect them. Okay. And you have this big apparatus over here on the side that just makes this bigger and bulkier. Okay. And to me, it's just pulling these hoses up just like we just did right there. And then taking the, taking the plastic caps on and mounting them on the things and tightening them up. Yeah, not it's too just, bad. It's, it's one less thing to go wrong. And so uh, obviously, you know, being a semi-portable or portable, or whatever the correct term is there, um, I mean, I would assume then if you're moving the control station, obviously we're gonna put a plug on this. You're gonna unplug it. You got the connections here. You put your wheels and stuff, which we'll check out. Do you normally just see them? Do they, someone wheel a control station with it or Controls set it, it on top? Or? Set it right on top. Of oh, there it. you just go. Just pull it to wherever you're going. So just set it on top and kind of, I think I saw on one of the videos, uh, I think factory one, you guys just, they kind of showed it sitting on top of the, the lift and the guys just kind of wheeled it outside. So yeah, that's, that's all, that's all there is to it. So that's, again, it's personal preference, but 
it's just for me putting them on like this is just one less thing to go wrong makes sense it's you know there's not a, there's no o-rings in there it's a hydraulic it's a hydraulic hose fitting and you know you put it on and you're good to go yeah i mean uh i'm familiar with you know one of the other like really tiny portable brands of jacks which i get those because you can hang them on your wall and do other things they're obviously not even close to the same thing but having quick connects there is nice maybe because you can break it down into total pieces but obviously you're not going to take this lift and just lay it up against your wall. <laughs> yeah, but they're always available. If someone decides they want them, yeah. there's two pipes that come here in this panel. Yeah, I think I've seen them. They just here. got the regular yep. hydraulic quick fittings on it. So. That's, you just, it's a matter of just put, taking these off, putting the pipes on. There's the two fittings here. You take the ends off, screw the fittings on those ends, and plug them in. So okay, awesome. It's, it's always so maybe available. anybody, if they had one and decided they ever wanted the quick connects for any yep. reason, could always be added if they wanted to put exactly. it on afterwards. Exactly. Makes sense. But again, I think it once people um, have had it, they'll find that they just just not taking them off. They're yeah, not, they're not moving it around. If you're not in a in a production type of shop, chances are you're not moving this thing around. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, the reason in here with some of the you know vehicles we detail and the work that we do, you know, the goal is to to be able to move it between kind of the two bays we have here. So it's not going to go far when it goes anywhere. So correct. So is the is the station filled? So do you actually fill the control station? We need to fill the control station okay. now. So, but you said the cylinders are already, are those just kind of pre-checked from the factory? No, they're, they, they're full. No, they're pre-filled, okay. The cylinders, those lines and everything, they've been- So no, uh, been none of the, uh, I'm, I'm used to before, we've had to do bleeding operations, which can take a while. Bleeding operation on this one, run it up, let it down. Awesome. You're done. So no, uh, no pump pump hold <laughs> no, no. the equivalent on the hydraulic side and just so no one misunderstands us it wasn't ran with this control unit at the factory oh sure there's a master unit that they they hook up to it and cycle they, them okay they cycle it up and they make sure everything works that there's no leaks on the cylinders or anything like that they let it back down they put the plugs on the hoses and pack it up Okay, makes sense. So, so you got a full factory acceptance test, test then on the Exactly. Units. Now, the, the control station has gone through electrical tests and motor tests and everything like that. They haven't, because if you put oil in there and then you lay it down, like yeah, this, you're going to spill it out. You have oil all over everything because it's not a quote unquote sealed reservoir. It's not makes sense what you would think because there's a gasket around here and everything. So, I guess now would be the time to say that one of the really cool features of the lifts that come in from Germany is the fact that we have you see you see this is the reservoir right here's yep. your valve block and everything like that if you look around here you don't see a motor yeah that's because the motor actually is in the hydraulic reservoir oh all built in nice when you we when we fill up the hydraulic fluid in here it will cover the motor up okay and the, so pu and the pumps inside there too you literally have a motor you don't see cooling fins like you would a normal motor so it's, it's oil cooled because it's oil cooled. okay very nice it's also oil lubricated and it also has a nice little shield around it for sound. Okay. So it sounds, when we get ready to run it, you'll see it sounds more like a sewing machine than it does a lift. Yeah, some of them, when you run them, it's like, I yeah, mean, it's- This one's quiet, quiet. And you'll, you'll also notice uh, some of their cycled a little bit, even even through the end of a pump, you know, they motors can get pretty hot. Exactly. So yeah, that's cool. So that's, that's the really, really nice thing about this thing. So I pulled the dipstick out. What everyone needs to realize if they do this, this dipstick means absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, the rule of thumb on, on a lift, at least it's my rule of thumb, if you put enough oil in there that it makes the pistons go all the way to full stroke. Yep. And the motor doesn't start sound like you're sucking. Yeah, you're, uh, an empty you're drink, cavitating. Yeah, cavitating. Like out. that. If yep. it doesn't do that, it's got enough fluid in it. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. It's, it, that, that's, it's all it does is displace. Okay. It, it, you know, you pump it from this place and it pumps into the cylinder and makes the cylinder go out. When that cylinder's all the way out, it's not like oil in, a, in an engine. That, Correct. You know, it gets dirty, so you have to have more over there. So and you need, yeah, all the necessary, you know, cavity, you know, fills and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. So, yeah. so let's get a couple gallons over here in a funnel, and we'll sounds good. Fill this thing up. Two gallons should, should okay. do it perfectly. We I think you bought three just in case. But just in case, yeah. We'll, we'll dump we'll dump two of them in here, and AW32 is what you want. Clean. I've seen, I know some, some systems use a, a 46 versus 32, just kind of an all season versus all It just climates. gets, you know, if you live in a climate that's warm, like nice and warm all the time, and this lift's always going to be nice and warm, 46 won't hurt it. Okay. But when you've got valves, the thing of it is you've got valves in here 
these down valves when you hit the press the down button, that valve has about a sixteenth of an inch of stroke to it. Okay. It's a very minute thing. So you start putting thick oil in there, it doesn't want to work as fast. Okay. Likewise, there's all kinds of manufacturers out there say, yeah, ATF's great. And a lot of people will tell you, well, you know, you can put ATF in a lift, it's the same as hydraulic fluid. But would you put hydraulic fluid in your automatic transmission? <laughs> so it's not the same. That's correct. It's not the same. And it just doesn't seem to have the same, the, the viscosity of this doesn't seem to be the same as that your ATF and the valves just don't seem. Makes sense. I think if you just have a little ball valve, like in a standard two post lift, and there's very little in there, but on something like this, it's just, it, AW, I mean, how, how much did you pay per gallon on this? Was it $7 a gallon or it, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it wasn't crazy expensive. It's not terrible. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're buying, you know, 50 gallons. My, uh, my diesel trucks what takes way more oil than this does. Yeah. <laughs> that becomes an expensive change. So, so far, pretty straightforward, so. Yeah. Yeah. What all lifts does uh, New Small Mom offer? I mean, I think I've seen a fairly good selection, but I mean, I mean, you, all you the got way, the sprinters, you've got the, the you jumbos, go, which we've seen. Yes, seven to nine thousand pound jumbos, the the full rise lift. Then you've got wheel engaging like alignment lifts that, you know, up to eighteen thousand pounds. Okay. Um, each so, runway weighs about thirty five hundred pounds. So you're up running heavy duty equipment on those, basically. So yeah. Um, Two post lifts all the way from a 7,000 pound two post lifts all the way up to an 18,000 pound two post lift with, okay. double, with double jointed arms. I mean, make a lot of stuff. I mean, awesome. It's, yeah, it's. Now do you guys do any of the, uh, I've seen before in some of the bus shops, you know, where they've got uh, the wheel around the big monsters where they go under each wheel. Do you guys do any of the single wheel? I'll, the, I'll call the, the single the, lifts. The mobile columns. Yeah, the mobile just, columns. We don't bring back in, we don't bring in the United States anymore just okay. because we were kind of a leader in the market to begin with on that. And then everyone around us got really, really cheap on it. And we found ourselves that we were priced out of the market, bringing it in from Germany, because let's face it, a lot of, a lot of the competition buys a lot of their components from China. Yeah, China. And yep. that's one of the things- In a really about, low cost region, yeah. One of the things about Nussbaum is, and it's always, it's family company. There's no, I mean, it's literally owned by Nussbaum, so. That's cool. And coming down from Hans, he would not have anything to do with anything Chinese on one of his products. Makes sense. And it's still the same way. Okay. You know, just don't do the Chinese thing. No, I, I definitely understand as a guy who's done, you know, work all over the world. Um, you know, we, we do stuff out of China, but you still run into, yeah, some issues with, you know, quality and supply and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and I think a lot of people. You really go there for cost. I mean, that's always been, and it still kind of is today. You really go and there. And there is there is some good stuff coming out, and I can't say sure. some of the stuff is good, but it's just one of the things. I think it has something to do with the German culture and tradition. Is no, if it's a German product, it's going to be a German product. Now, that makes granted, sense. Like for example, that switch is Lovato. It's from from Italy. Yeah, from Italy. Yeah. Um, the pump is, it used, they used to be Bosch. We started going to the really, really high pressure and the Bosch pump didn't seem to handle it. Going back to the early eighties, okay. early nineties, excuse me. And they switched over to an Italian pump called Marzocchi. Okay. And I can say the amount of pumps we replace in a year, I could probably hold right here. That's cool. It's, they just don't, they just don't go bad. So, yeah. So let's um they try to make you the Maytag repairman, right? Which is uh you gotta get out and sell and do less exactly. repair. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> this is also it's different because if you look at, you know, your your typical internet two post or whatever where they've got um looks like an electric motor. Yeah. With a little aluminum block, which is the you know, their their valve block. Yeah, their valve and block. And then there's a there's a pump that's attached to that on the bottom side and a big plastic jug. When those go bad, most people go take four bolts out, unwire them, throw that one in the trash. Put the you know put the new one on. If something goes wrong on this, if the motor goes bad, will you unbolt the pump from it, and you put a new motor on, and it's bolt your pump right back to it. It's kind of if you look at your your truck. Yeah. If something goes bad in the motor, you don't take the transmission, the motor, everything, everything out, out of it, toss it away, yeah. and put a new one on. So it's it's kind of nice. Of, you, you can literally repair things on this. Nice. So you can actually yeah. If a valve goes bad, if a valve goes bad on one of those, pretty much replace the whole thing. With if a valve goes bad on this. 
or it starts leaking by, you take that out and take a wrench on that, take that out. First, you clean it and see if it's got a little foreign matter in it. If it doesn't and it still leaks down, you just take that out, put a new one in, put your new coil or put your coil back on and put it back on. Nice. That's all there is to it. You buy this lift now, you're going to have this lift around for 20 or 25 years. It's just going to last that long. You're not going to be, you know, saying, oh, well, I, you know, it, it went bad. I got a cylinder leak and I don't want to spend $500 on a new cylinder. So yeah, I'm I mean, not you, saying that's what it is, but you're just not going to have issues with this. Sure. So we make these in both 110 and 220. Okay. Assume just a speed thing on the motor? It is a speed thing. That's yeah. basically so what it is. So you can run the 110 just a little slower? The 110 because 110 doesn't have the horsepower, so it's got a little smaller volume pump on it. Okay. So it goes up a little slower. Um, the 220, which you elected, is just, it's faster is what it, what it comes right down to. And we'll cheat once we uh, drop that guy in there. I need to get, I'm going to need to get a flat blade screwdriver. Is it here. a flat? It is flat. Who doesn't use Phillips? A lot of people say, well, why don't you send them out with a plug? Because I'm on it, I'm, you're the electrical guy, I'll let you. Yeah, so as an electrician, I mean, I'm using a NEMA 1450, which is made uh, in here for electric vehicles and welders and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, everybody says, oh, I got a, yeah, I got a 240 plug. And it's like, wait, is that a 50 amp? Is that a 30 amp? Is that a, you know, is that a three pole, four pole, a two pole? Yes. You know, what, uh, what version do you have? So you're right, you'd be. Exactly. You got to ship them a whole box of potential plugs. Or, yeah, and so that's why stock a bunch that's of why ones. we uh, that's why we don't put plugs on them. Makes that's sense. exactly right. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. Do you in wiring this? Do you want me to go to neutral? Or you want me to go to ground? Um, you're going to go to let's see. Yeah, you go up to the neutral and got your uh, your two poles. So. So you want me to go down here? Um, or do you want me to go to ground with the ground wire? Yeah, you're going to go to ground with the ground okay. wire. Because yep. it doesn't have a neutral Yeah, just, I was going to say, I'm assuming it's just a regular two pole. Yes. Yeah, we'll just do the ground. We'll get it, uh, we'll get it running today, and then I'll probably fancy up that cord a little bit to shrink it and make it look all uh, pretty, long and permanent and pretty. That's the, uh, the OCD electrician coming out in me. So. I don't think I've ever done a pretty, pretty cord gap in my life. <laughs> Should be long enough to get us over there. Uh, well, we're gonna Maybe. see. Maybe. Watch right there at the. Look at, uh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Like we meant it. Assuming the guy who has that wired it right. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't trust him. I would not trust him at all. So you got your off and on switch right here. It's also a lockout switch if you want. So, so you got a safety, you want to lock it or padlock it, yeah. If you so desire, and no, I haven't put the switch in yet. My kids want to come out and play on the lift or the guys want to, want to ride some stuff up and down. So the moment of truth, I have no idea which is up and down right now because it's not, <laughs> it's not in the thing, so hey. And there it goes. Well, there we go. Just that simple. Boy, that is quiet. You're right, yeah, like sewing machine. Yeah, it doesn't make much. It doesn't. I make think much the fan noise. on my uh, laptop is louder than that. Wow. You know, the other thing I noticed with these, you guys have got, um, you know, you see a lot of lift specs, but several of the ones that I've checked, when they call them mid rises, there are several that are about this height, but that's because they're saying like with a six inch or a truck adapter or something on them. Yeah, this is. Or, yeah, where they say like 39 inches, but then you look, it's like with a six or eight inch block. Exactly. So they're only like less than 30, mm -hmm. where obviously, yeah, you guys have got a this full- This one's 39. A full mid-rise height. With yeah. nothing on it. Man, and that's nice. People look at the, you know, some people like the galvanized, some people don't like the galvanized top. I personally, I think it's great. Yeah, I like, I mean, anything's gonna get scuffed up. The nice thing is usually, if you scuff the other stuff up, it's going to be metal under, underneath. So exactly. at least on this, any scuffing is not going to show up and be as obvious. And in the rust belt, it's not going to rust. Yeah. It's not. And this is, this is not electroplated. This is hot dip. So you're doing full hot dip. This is hot dip galvanized. Very right nice. Here, so. Wow. Now, is, I assume, it, you know, this is in blue. I've, I've actually seen some maybe like blacks and grays and other stuff. Is, I know it seems like your colors are blue, but. We, we can, it's, we have to order them. Okay. So the blue is the quote unquote standard color. Okay. Is, is what we That's the Nussbaum factory Noose, color, if you will. It's Nussbaum blue. That's, okay, Nussbaum blue, okay. Yeah, so that's basically, and it's kind of what you're gonna get if you, if you put that on there, so. Okay. You, 
right now we kind of put this in exactly the wrong place, but we're gonna see how it works, okay? Okay. So we're gonna try to move it to kind of where we want it. <laughs> this is your front wheel. Okay. Notice there's a little dog right here? Yep. We're gonna put it on. When it goes down, it's gonna, it's gonna engage it, but you can see where it's gonna engage it. No. I'm assuming we can't slide this guy at all. Uh, you think we can try to move her? Do you have a piece of, just a, like a little piece of plywood or something like that? Or a little, you know? Uh, no, probably not in here. Well, you know, we're kind of off of it right Actually, here. Actually, so no, we could, we could throw just the end of one of those boards down, couldn't we? Smack the screws out of it? I don't think, it, I think it's gonna work. Let's just Hopefully. see what happens here and. Try not to bend the crap out of that drain. We're, we're, I don't think we're gonna bend her. I'll let you watch it. So what happens is you put your wheels on the back. You can see where I put them on the scissors here. And I put the front wheel on the front. And as it comes down, Oh, so the wheels are already actually already on the other side. Well, they, they weren't on there. I put them, I, oh, moved okay. Them, okay. I moved them from their storage place to here. So as it comes down, it will actually. Okay. And there it's up off of there. So now let's try. If you will push from that side. Okay. I will pull from this side. There we go. Oh, heck. Well, that was That's easy. That's just too easy. <laughs> I was uh, I was waiting to have to put a lot more meat into it than that. Yeah, so actually you can probably pull that blanket right out of there. It shouldn't be touching or anything. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's touching anything. Wow. Look at that. So you don't even need the hook. No, that's that's how that's they how gotta we, include that as the accessory. So let's um Oop. I'll try to pull this back around here just a little bit. And get a little bit closer to the is that gonna get us close enough here that we can? I just want that. Let's pull the control station a little bit this way. There we go, that's out of the way. Now the question cool. is, how do we get the, uh, the lines on the other side? We're gonna do that. Awesome. We are gonna do that. And you're gonna say- Because otherwise the OCD and it'll come, and come out on me and I'll wonder how in the world I'm gonna do that. Gonna I have say, seen in some of the pictures though, that you obviously see people kind of lay it along. They kind of move the control station one side or mm -hmm. the other when they're doing it too. So when we go back down, you'll notice, see how it disengages again. Nice. Yeah, that moved. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. just kind of shoving it around with your foot. I've seen some others, again, you, you see some folks that have some moving schemes and they're, yeah, one, they don't quick detach. Number two, they're kind of hokey in how they work. So when you're not using these, they go right there. Oh, nice. And they go right there. And then this just comes off. So set that out with our so, uh, other like piece. That. That's so, pretty sharp. Let's, um, let's wow. put, our, put our ramps on here real quick. The biggest mistake that I have ever made on this, and I've probably done it three times, is I've gotten a hurry. <laughs> if you notice, see that? Yep. That doesn't work if you put that on this side. Because then the thing that releases the ramp Underneath is on the the, car. Under, under the car. <laughs> and you get in a big hurry when you're setting up for a show or something like that. And you're like, and oh. Not, and you usually notice it on the last one, of course. Yeah. So you, that, you said you needed a set of snap rings for that, you right? You need a small set of pliers for the snap rings. We can do that. I'll let you guess what this is for. Hanging the hook. You got it. A little bit of organization. A lot of calls come and say, hey, what's this piece for? I got this extra piece in the yeah, kit. What's that for? You, sh you should tell them that goes deep inside the control center. Yeah, that's your, sa that's your safety lock. Uh, yeah, you gotta if go you, deep. You, didn't, you mean you didn't put it in? Yeah. So I noticed the, uh, the guards on the side. I'm assuming those are like finger and, finger and toe, technically. Europeans are big on toe protection. Yeah. They're big on toe protection. So yes, that is supposed to, if you've got your foot here and that comes down, it's supposed reminder, to warn you that the lift is coming down. A reminder that's coming down. Exactly right. Okay. So what we'll do here. I'll have to order the, uh, the English version. Actually, it makes it look uh, more Euro. With the It's like Euro license plates on the front of the car. Everybody does it now. <laughs> so you got your Euro tags. And of course that tells you where 
That's your center of gravity. Oh, yeah, that's your CG. Okay. Very cool. And if you notice, it's right at the X. It's right in the middle of the X with it all the way up. Okay. And that's, so is that, that's what they're calling the fixed bearing then. So when I was reading that, I was thinking here, but the fixed bearing is literally the center of your X. Of the yeah, this is your fixed bearing, right? Okay. Here. And then that one slides up. And if you look, that should be lined up with that. Okay. It's close. Yeah. yeah. So that's where you're trying to keep your CG is on that. Mm -hmm. And again, until you get to, let's say you're putting a 3,000 pound car. So if you do the math on it, and I just assume do it on 6,000 pounds or 7,000 because it works better for me. Yeah. It's a two thirds, one third weight distribution. Okay. So in other words, say 6,000, 4,000, 2,000. Okay. That's what you want. So if, I would assume then if you've got a, you know, if you rear wheel or front wheel drive, doesn't matter if it's got a front engine in it, you're going to have the engine this way, correct? You, you, you can, but when you're only picking up, you, you can have 2,000 pounds hanging out this end of the lift. Okay. That's your, or, or if you do the 7,000, it'd be 2,666, I guess. Okay. Is what it would be. I don't think anything that's gonna have a rear engine is gonna be over 2,666 pounds on that end. Okay, yeah. From here back. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you think, you know, a rear engine today be that, uh, you know, a Porsche 911 or GT4 or, but if you, you know, some of the other foreigns, but even those are not gonna be that heavy on the backside. But if someone was going to do that, you just, if, and you're going to take Back something in. that weighs a lot out of the car, you just need to make sure of, because all of a sudden, if you've got the engine way back here, and I don't know if you've, I'm not that much of a Yeah, a, if you're going to take guy, the whole front suspension it, and everything if, out. Or if, and you have it parked way out here, and you take the engine out. Yeah, makes you, sense. Yeah, you just need to make sure of understanding where your center of, center of, gravity, center of gravity changes. Yeah, center of gravity change when yeah, you pull it out. So this will get, uh, you know, used obviously for the, you know, oil changes and the basics, but majority of this is going to be wheels off detailing. So for us to pull off, you know, uh, clean the underside, you know, inside the wheel wells and the chassis and stuff. So w with that, uh, you know, can you comment? And I, one of the things we were looking at was the ability that, you know, we're not going to do like nasty full scale, you know, washes on these, but the ability to wash, you know, wheels and tires and other stuff you know, is that something you guys feel comfortable with the compatibility there from a user perspective to just don't get it on that sounds good you yeah don't you take do. the control center underwater but yeah yeah i mean and even if you put a garbage bag over the top of it sure. just it's not meant it's not meant to have water sprayed directly on it okay or so it's running down inside there or anything like that so as, as far, far as the lift i gotta hurt anything on this lift and i assume there is just you know making sure you're staying up with your maintenance and keeping exactly. it clean, cleaned and lubed and all that kind of stuff so you got just the, uh, so you, you basically preset the uh, snap rings on those pins and stuff those guys in. Yeah, you do. You need a little motivator? No, I just gotta find the hole. There we go. Awesome. So just, uh, yeah. Just and snap. I'll do that if you wanna go back after me. Drop the snap rings in? Put the snap rings on the outside of it. We just can don't do let that. that. Don't get your finger in here and let that fall on your finger yep, or yep. anything. They do put a few extras in there. I think they got tired of people calling, 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 calling them after, custom after German. They and say, "Would you please UPS us a snap ring?" But these are these are custom German snap rings, though. <laughs> they are custom. Yeah, that's right. Let's just keep telling ourselves that, okay? It, if you don't order the fact, what's that? Speaking of which, there went wrong right there. I'm gonna shoot them across the room all day long. I need to put my fingers in front of them. That'll help. Now, the one thing that's nice about your floor is at least you can see it. You try to put them on a flake epoxy floor and find them. Boy, I think for everybody at home, this is not my first time running a pair of snap rings, but it looks like it is. By the last one, I'll get it down. So uh, just the snap ring there, and then I can drop this, right? Yep, just drop it right down. So you've That's got it. it like that, and then you're Pull it up. up. And then let it all the way down, nice. if you're on a short wheelbase car. Okay, awesome. And I believe we're one of the few people that on a mid-rise that actually have a lockout ramp. Um, people don't realize, you know, when it comes to, especially on German cars and, and foreign sports cars, if you will, how important pickup, getting to the actual pickup point is. You just can't throw something under 
Yeah, unless any, you want to smash any, stuff. Any place you want to, because you know you could actually really, really cause yourself a lot of cost yourself a lot of money. Um, even if you look at a, a Honda Odyssey, you think of minivan, right? I don't need these. If you're lifting a Honda Odyssey on these, they both have to be out to hit the lifting points. I know on a, a Tesla, some of the Teslas are very picky about what they do there too, because you've got the battery pack and specific lifting points. As a as a battery guy for my prime life, um, yeah, we. Unfortunately, we do deal with fires and explosions usually from mistreatment of batteries. And uh, obviously that's usually the case is we've had some folks that have done some pretty big damage to their Teslas by you know throwing a set of jack stands underneath or a jack or, or using a cheap lift and not making sure the blocks were in the right place. So yeah, you're right. You can do the same thing as well. Do you like putting them on in the down position better? Yeah, actually, I find okay. that that works. I don't lose them as That's bad. good. <laughs> I may have a method by the end of it. Anybody watching is going to be like, who's the idiot with tools? Is that his first time with a pair of snap rings? Well, there have been times when, you know, and I wish that, you know, every lift arrived like yours, but where forks have gone into the bottom side of that oh. and tore holes in the bottom of the crate, and then that little bag just happens to, with these pins, and everything just happens to drop through and it's in some freight terminal somewhere. <laughs> it's in the bottom of some truck and, somewhere. And, and in, in a pinch, we have, I've, we've gone and just got bolts and... Yeah, just to throw them through, yeah. Like just an Allen head cap screw and thrown them, you know, thrown them through there and put a screw on the bottom side so someone could use their lift in the meantime until, you know, they got a new set of pins to them, so. Makes sense. It works. The one other one I was gonna ask you, as far as, uh, you know, widths and stuff, I know some of the things they talk about is, making sure that you're careful on these, even with any of the lifts that you're not really inbound side, so you're not you know, inloading those. You guys kind of have a limitation or a preference for how far, you know, should probably, of course, probably not hanging off, but. You now know. you can get on the inside. This one's a little bit different than the Sprinter because it's more, it's more fixed and, and the platforms are a little bit more rigid because okay. they're, they're, not, they're not as wide. Um, and then with the, with, excuse me, with the Jumbo, because the Jumbo are two completely individual. Oh, that's right. Platforms. Yeah, because you can, you can thoroughly adjust the width on those. They don't have, because this, this bar going across here is transverse bar, and that one are st stabilizing this platform from doing okay. that. This is given that strength. So I've seen, so that's probably the difference I've seen in some others is the, these legs are independent. They're not tied in, exactly. there's tied no, in. So yeah, there's that's nothing. why you see risk where they say like, hey, if you're gonna be putting pads within like halfway, I've, I've seen some that literally, you have to use the outer half. You can't use the inner half at all. No. Yeah, Cause they're worried about it, worried about you shoving them. You can come here. It's not that, it's, okay. it's not an issue on this one. You can do it. It's no problem. The problem you'll get is if you go to put a truck on this one and we have, well, we had spoken about it. We have a transverse available. We just didn't have it when we got sure. this one out. And basically what it does is, is it's channel. Just channel goes across. And it has a couple little little plates welded right here. Okay. So you put it in there and it drops down here and what it'll do, and then you can put your blocks. Anywhere along in that. In here, because on a Dodge truck, if you pulled a Dodge, for example, I drive a Dodge so I know where that's at. Yeah. My frame rail would be like right here. So you would have to get this thing just dead on. Okay in order to make it work. Yeah, I'll have to check out. I've got uh, obviously a couple of my electrics and uh, you know, Jeep. Um, I'm not sure on the Jeep. I've looked at the Jeep frame rail. I think it is a little more narrow where my truck, my Super Duty, I think those are a little wider now because they were trying to do the stability, but we'll we'll and try it out on a few and see. And you bring up a Jeep. Is it newer Jeep, older Jeep? Yeah, newer Jeep, Wrangler? yeah. Wrangler? J yeah, JLs, okay. yeah, four-door JL. So just like that, when you get this, you also have to kind of look at what you're doing under there because on Jeeps, and I'm not sure on the brand new body style, which is the JL, right? Yeah, JLs, yep. The JK, the gas tank plastic, hang, right. hangs down this far right beside the frame. Yeah. So you have to get stuff up in there so you can actually lift on. Things. That makes sense. And we make, this comes with the two inch crush blocks. Okay. We actually make four inch crush blocks for it also. Okay. So you can put a four and then a two and you can get- Get so that rise up there where you exactly. need it. Exactly. Okay. So you're not lift. you don't want to lift on a plastic gas tank. No, 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 not, yeah. Not good. <laughs> no, not a good, that's, no. Uh, that's, that's worse than lifting on a battery, so. But again, it's, it's, it's looking under there and if you, you've got a lift like this, I'm gonna assume you have a little bit of common sense. You gotta look up there and figure out where you're picking yeah, up. Yeah, how do you make and that it's compatibility? On a frame. You know, it's yeah. on something that's made to lift the car. I'm used to, in some others, you know, we had, you know, we do the old uh, four by four or six by six trick. Right. You know, where you can land, which works. It so, works. Yeah, it works perfectly fine. Um, yeah, we'll have to take a look into getting some of those 
cross beams as well. So. I did notice um, no locks. No, um, in fact, well, an issue that I know I've, I've seen repeatedly, no uh, electric locks, hydraulic locks, air locks. It seems like everybody's got some darn, uh, manual locks. I've seen the manuals that have beams across here and all that kind of stuff. So how do you guys handle that? Well, remember when we first started and I, we were hooking up the hoses and yep. I said, check valve, this one goes to one cylinder, check valve, this one goes to the other cylinder. So what happens is, is if I would hook, if I would cut one of those hoses off, I still have one whole cylinder. And because of this going across, if that cylinder is completely disabled, this one will still hold it up. Okay. It still works. So you have a, literally so you the way the thing's made, you have a redundant hydraulic system. So you really would have to have like what we, what as engineers we call multi-level catastrophic failures. You're not, you're not going to have one point of failure. You've got to have several to be that worse. But so let's say that both all hoses. lines are off, everything goes uh, from there. Both Am hoses. I dropping to the ground? Nope. It's going to go like that. I think even if my... Both um, hoses break. This is what it's going to do. Okay. It's going to go down because right here, and you probably can't see it on film, right there where that hose goes in, right it's screwed inside there, there's a flow restrictor that has like a 1.2 millimeter hole, hole in it. So you've already got a restriction there. That and it it's in the steel. It's not in the hose. Okay. And it's not, and contrary to popularity, there's this thing out there that I think people think the end is going to blow off the hydraulic cylinder. Yeah, just no. <coughs> grenade hydraulic blow. cylinders don't blow up. Yeah, not like no. that. No. No. They'll well, start leaking. Yeah. They can blow a seal and it will it will leak fluid out the seal. But You're going to have an identifier. Gonna, it's not going to just dump all the fluid out instantly. Yeah. So, but if if both hoses would go down, it's going to lower at the speed at which it normally lowers at. If you can, I mean, even I think even my big butt could out get a get out from underneath this if that's happening. Well, so. that being said. And some people are just, some people are still just leery of that. So now these come with these. Okay. Which have been labeled by our factory. We actually put these in in the US. Okay. Because Europeans do this, you, the, Europe, the US people are still kind of leery of this whole thing. <laughs> it's gotta have a lock. Okay. And you, you, we talked earlier, you've seen what locks can do when one locks yeah, and one Yeah, actually I've seen more danger created by locks. And frankly. I've got pictures on my phone too of all kinds of I mean, you get cockeyed and then they can't get them up and... If you're, uh, if you're worried about it, you put that there and you put that there. And personally, I, I use my hydraulics. I don't, I don't, I can go back here and I can lower it onto that. But now I've got these holding them and I don't have my hydraulics holding it anymore. Fair. So what I would like to, what I like is I just, I'll just throw them in there. If something happens, the hydraulics, well, it's gonna- it'll Gives come, you a secondary, yeah. It'll come back on that. And that my makes hydraulics sense. are still holding everything and I'm not even relying on that. So, that makes sense. So you can put that under there and it, it works no, fine. That's, that's nice. Again, at least for those, you know, there's, I, I see folks that are worried about, you know, you gotta have jack stands on them and throw a jack and put buckets and stack up tires. And, and I'm like, at some point, like, you gotta trust your equipment. Um, now, I'll be honest, looking at these, you know, seeing the size of the cylinders and I mean, the build quality without a doubt is beyond anything that we've purchased previously. So, I mean, it's very impressive from what we're seeing so far. So, I mean, no. is it, again, this is a lift that's gonna be around the, you're gonna have it until you can't work under it anymore, probably. <laughs> It's going to be around 20, 25 years. Very nice. Yeah. Very impressive. Like I said, we've, we've got, we've had a lot of others and you know, at the shops with the power equipment and others have run a lot of about every name you can think of, I would say very impressed so far with what we've seen. So we'll do basically the last thing we have to do is put this on. Put the cover on. So we're going to do this. This is Need one a uh, Phillips for that guy. I know it's, uh, it's actually, it is uh, metric Allen. Metric Allen's. You need but a metric I, Allen? I have, I thought I brought it in anyway, a, my little fold-up set of metric right here in my front pocket. Okay, awesome. We'll see if not, I got a set. So you pull this off. This is one of the cool features of it. I think it's just... I love the stainless. I, as, many, you can, as you can see, I'm kind of a stainless fan, so I like the, I like the clean, clean look, so... So I know everybody's into the Harbor grays and the blacks and the dark blues and reds. I don't know, I'm kind of a clean and stainless. 
probably because uh, my mom was a nurse, so yeah. almost hospital grade. <laughs> I don't know who, uh, I, I, there's not another lift company does anything that looks yeah, that's anything nice. like this. Yeah, normally it's, it's normally it's kind of a cheap tube frame, all the pumps exposed. You'd be lucky half the time if they even cover anything. It's just, it looks like a, uh, it look almost, most of them look like a two wheel dolly that they bolted stuff to a two wheel dolly. Exactly. Yeah, so, well, they bolt a motor and pump assembly, that, that one we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, with the motor tank pump with and a all tank that on stuff. it to a two wheel dolly. Yeah. That's exactly right. So the way this works, this, this, is the, this is the thing that gets most people on this lift is trying to do it. So you've got, if you notice, there's a little. Ah, uh, you've got the switch covers, yeah. Rectangle there. What you have to basically do is pry that back and it comes out of there. Yep, so you got the little switch covers, cool. Mm -hmm. And then you take this out and that, I have a bag of 20 of those at home. <laughs> People break them. So when people Snap. call me, oh, this thing was broken. I'll send you one. So uh, yeah, people uh, either getting uh, a panel on it or uh, trying to break it off by hand. Switch Very nice switch assembly. Well, wow. yeah, it's everything I've seen. Is I mean, you look at some of the uh, the switches and pieces. They you know cut a lot of corners on all the other stuff that's there. So well, and even and, and this is something else that even Newspawn does that because it does have electric wiring. This whole double switch thing, you're going like, okay, uh, you're an electrician, right? Well, you shouldn't have to have two switches for up and two switches for down. But what it is, there's a normally open, normally closed, normally open, normally closed. So what happens is the, the up button derives its power through a normally closed contact on the downside. Okay. So what happens is, is you're going up with it and you push the down button, it cuts the power to the up button. It's a dead man, yeah. So you can't push both buttons at once. Yes, it's, and, it's, and you get a true dead man that yeah. way, true, so. So you just take it and then you just snap it right back on here like this, well, let me see, how about like this way? Like that, and if I did it right, and, and I didn't. Oh. I got a, I got a 50, 50 <laughs> chance of getting it right the first time. Yeah. Oh, you know what I just did? Oh. I might have had it right the first time. Oh, nope, I didn't. So. <laughs> now you got just, double lucky there. We'll put this, I put the dipstick back in, by the way. Sounds good. So we'll go like that. If you can just, yeah, just hold that up there. there. I'm gonna get this. We'll open these up. If you want me to put the rubber gasket on, I will. <laughs> just in case it what rattles. Am I, what am I saying here? <laughs> Byron, what do you normally do with those rubber gaskets? Oh, I'll just wait for your guys to be like, Byron, you didn't install it properly. Yeah. I'll be getting calls tomorrow. That's right. Why did you not show the prop? That doesn't follow our diagram. I did, uh, did get a chance to look through the uh, electronic prints. Again, very impressive. The uh, you know, full bills of materials and you know, all the details. And of course, all the warnings and uh, you know, all the other warnings and pieces that need to be in there too. But uh, obviously, uh, a lot of good instruction. There. Did you so, read it? Did you read it in all three languages? Or um, is it four languages now? Um, I did not. Oh, okay. So English, and if it had some Mandarin, I probably could have read yeah. some of that. So just to that make sure it was there. translated properly. We got two more here to do. So what we're going to do now? We're going to take the pressure off of it. Okay, and I'm going to turn this off because I don't want anyone to accidentally hit the up button while I've got these hoses <laughs> off. Okay. It, it'll make a big mess. Because what we're gonna do now is obviously, you want your control station over there. Yeah. This is a lot easier with two people than it is with one. I've done it by myself before. You just have to have kind of a long wingspan. If you would hold that up for me, just like that, so just so it doesn't. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna take this. So just undoing directly off the cylinder there. Mm -hmm. All right. Now go out there and just start pulling. Gently pulling that hose out of there. Definitely could use two people, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and wait a minute. Oh, sorry. There it is. Should Ready? come right out. Look at that. Kind of hold them up. Now what we'll do is we'll just pull this right over here. And again, since these are you know independent cylinders, doesn't doesn't much matter as long as you makes no get difference them both at all. connected back up. 
So now we're going to do, we're going to hope put the long hose in. Feed the first. long guy in. Yep. Feed that over to me. And as it goes in, well, what you kind of have to do is put your finger in here. Okay, I've got it. Give me a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. Now put the ears through there. And we, you know, you mentioned how stiff hydraulic hose is. It's <laughs> now's yeah. where you find it. You got it through. There we go. Go up through the hole. I'll let you make the final there. Well, that was straightforward. <laughs> And that's that. Now it's on the right side. Anything we got to do bleeding wise after doing that? No, because when we let it down, any little air pocket that we had there is going straight back there. Okay. So you do a kind of a cycle up and down and I get you what you need. Yeah, that's all, that's all the bleeding there's involved in it. I noticed, uh, I'm assuming maybe that's because of something on the jumbo. Uh, I noticed on these guys, I think the jumbos have like some springs underneath for the for the doors, is that just because the way the platforms they lay down? It's a it's a different way. Again, this is German, and the new German style for the to lock out the ramp is that. Okay. The old German style was there's a tray that pulls out from under here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen and those. Okay. There. The springs are on there, so, so the, the doors ramp, just don't drop so the straight ramp down. Doesn't hang straight down because if it hangs straight down, it comes in and gets hung up. That makes sense. So the springs help get the ramp started, and then when it hits the ground, it just okay. flows, flows out. That's yeah, because otherwise you'd yeah, fold your ramps up or jam it all up. So. Exactly, and it won't come down. It yeah. doesn't take much. It's amazing <laughs> with that much weight how easy yeah. it is to jam them that's up. That's pretty cool. So I love the, I also love the fact that it's booming up. Yeah, it's no. It's easy. I'll turn this on. Take our brakes out. Like that. Yeah, those are nice. Just that extra assurance. If you break all that, you've got a problem on your hands. That yeah, was. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> and actually, we probably ought to throw the wheels in. We'll get that spare piece of plastic out too. Yeah, if you actually, if you just put the back ones in, it'll lift up the back. Actually, if you just put that one in, it'll lift up that side. Just enough to. Uh... I love that. That's easy. You just need enough to lift this out of here. What, uh, I mean, obviously don't gain a ton of clearance with that, but it looks like maybe what, uh, an inch or two of uh, kind of clearance underneath? About an inch is I think is what you get under it when you do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not gonna drag it down a gravel driveway or anything, but. The one thing it is not meant to do though, you can't put those wheels on there and then lower your car on it and expect to move your car around the shop. Notice they're not. That's, that's, a, that's a great disclaimer. I, well, I'm it, assuming that's been tried at least once, or otherwise you wouldn't have said that. It's, yes, it has. And where the first place it'll go when you do that is that little place right there. It will just spread that right Ooh. where it goes around the dog on the transverse. It'll just spread that right out. And it's, Again, I'm assuming that's a, you've seen that more than once. <laughs> that's, yeah. The other thing that we have that you have here is these are for those people that have extremely low height cars. So when I get, uh, get the lowered uh, GT3 over here. So this would go on here like this. Actually, you don't want, because if you want to lock your yeah. ramp up, it can't be over the top of it. So you set those down a little bit on you top set, of it. Set those down on both sides. And note that these have, and I guess I didn't show you that too, but there are, there are mounting holes in the base plate of this. Okay. If, if you, you use, there are four holes in each plate for half inch, anch half okay. inch anchors. Now you typically see if people are going to mount them, do they use all of those or a few of them or probably recommend them all is the. It all depends how OCD they are. Okay. 
Makes There's sense. a hole there. It's got to have an anchor. Nah, it basically keeps it from scooting. Yeah. Because you use the lift without being anchored all the time. Correct. Yeah, because you don't need it. I assume with the, the jumbos and stuff, maybe in some of those, if you got a little, little off camera, it might help provide a little stability, but maybe still not as necessary. Exactly. Okay. So basically you would drive up on this with very, very low at that point. You got two inches, then you're going to come here, then you're going to hit this, come up again. Makes the sense. The wheels are still going to be on this, so that gives you more clearance to get Blocks your and other lifting stuff. medium, which again, going back to our non-packing material, the nine pound foam. Yeah. So then you put these under there. Some people cut them down, you know, in half. It all depends what you what you want to do and what your particular car needs. Okay. But you would put these, and by the way, I don't know if we mentioned it. That can carry every bit of weight that this can. Okay. So yeah, you you can put them anywhere. This is, along so you there. can this is as much load bearing, the ramp locked out is as much load bearing as the rest of the lift. So that gives you the ability to do anything from, you know, a mini all the way to yeah, maybe a pickup truck, you know. You know. I could put my I could put my four-door truck on this all day long it okay. it without any problem whatsoever. Awesome. Um, the other thing about these is, again, people look at it and say, well, that's styrofoam. It's not a test of the fact this is not styrofoam. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not styrofoam. I don't know what it is, but maybe a urethane or it's something. A, it's just a product that is called nine pound foam. Okay. I, got. And I guess the higher the number, the more dense the foam is. Yeah, it's pretty stout. But what this does is your lifting point will it'll basically bite into this. Okay. And it'll kind of form. If you put it on a frame of a truck, it will literally just kind of push into this. And it, it works really nice. But the other thing that people don't see, you use a two before or whatever, and you put it on this, it can slide. Yeah. Especially if you've got oil and stuff. After you take a vehicle off of this, and it has the, its indentions where it would have on the top, yep. you'd look like this and look at the bottom where it was on here. Grip molding see, all around. You will see the indention of the of the tread plate. Oh geez. Meaning it, it literally locks into the tread plate. You cannot push it. Okay. You think about that little thing locked into this block, it won't go anywhere. And, uh, uh, why those over rubber? I mean obviously rubber seen those, you know, yeah, they're out the, there. The little rubber blocks. Yeah, they do, but it's it's one it's rubber, so it one, it really doesn't it's almost as hard as wood. It really Correct. doesn't cradle anything. So. And they dry and break and, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So this is just, I mean, we've been using this product for, well, since I've been around. It's okay. been around since. And since you say you offer those in a couple different. They couple come different? in this size and they come in four inch size. Okay. So. Very nice. Probably have to pick up some four inches as, as well while we're at it. So. so, and then they just stack up like that. So, but that's how. And that's pretty much. It, except for maintenance. Yeah, that was the next thing I was gonna ask you from a maintenance perspective. Uh, what do you do, what do you look at for kind of routine versus, you know, maybe uh, annual or biannual or whatever? What I like to do for maintenance, and if you notice right here, you'll see, <laughs> most people don't know what one of those are anymore. Yeah, There's actually a, gre a grease fitting up there yeah. to grease the top of that. Just a non-graphite grease. Okay, non-graphite. Just non-graphite, graphite gets sticky and everything. Yep. You have your slider block here. It's down on this. You notice there's a little bit of oil there. Okay. If you just take, again, like red, like a red whip wheel bearing grease. Yep. And you put it on there. But if you just put it on there, like right there. In front of the block. It'll just act like a bulldozer. Okay. A so you just maybe set a line across there and let it. No, it'll just push it off. Yeah. And it won't go under the it uh, won't okay. go onto the block. So there's a trick to doing that. And that makes sense. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's just gonna kind of peel up except for the surface. If you will go over and operate the, you'll go over and operate that. And this is something you can use like a, a short four before, a tall four before for that okay. matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, I've got this off the base, notice that, and I'm going to catch the lip up here as it hits. Stop. If you I saw it rise up. Happen, it just picked that up off of there. So just take some red grease on your finger and just shove it right under that thing. And now it's, now when you go back up with it, like right now, push the up button, grease is now smashed under the slider block. 
Awesome. So you just put something under and lower it is what, is what you can do and it will literally pick the thing up. What else from an overall maintenance? So that's uh, kind of, you know, grease in those. Well, and the these are some kind of, some kind of like a, something that will go in there. Uh, chain lube. Um, I, I Worth, like Werther or Worth has a SA2200. It goes on like as a, it sprays out as kind an oil. Kind of a film and then dries but up. Then, but then it goes to a grease. Okay. So if it goes into here, you want to keep these these lubed up. Okay. Right yeah, so you there. get some good action. Um, I use a Triflow, which is a Teflon. Same Teflon stuff. based. It's kind of film, but then it dries to a non-tacky, non-greasy. Any place that has a moving, the, you know, you've got your grease fitting here, but the bar right in here, if you, if you get some back in there, if you get some down in there, if you get some right in here, okay. just, just lube it up a little bit. Okay. It's got a moving part, shoot a little, shoot a little WD-40 or, or Teflon in it or, what, or whatever your preferred grease is. What about any other uh, flushing or, uh, you know, anything from the hydraulic fluids? I mean, from an hour's perspective there, I'm assuming that's a lot of hours for most people. Probably maybe their whole lifetime. I've had I've had guys that have had jumbos for twenty years and they've never done anything to the fluid. Okay. Um, I mean, most of your fluids nowadays are so so well advanced that, and you're not talking about high speed, high heat. You know, hydraulic fluid has a tendency to get a little sticky sometimes, and you've got those little valves in there, and you know, if someone in a in a garage such as this where it might go up what two times a day, three times a day. Yeah, it's, at, at most, it's going to be less than a half a dozen, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you dump that fluid out of there in five years and put new fluid in it, and, and the trick to doing that is put your brakes in there. Yep. Put your brakes in there. Take that hose off of that cylinder. Yep. And put it in a bucket <laughs> and hit the up button. Just flush it out. Until it doesn't push any fluid out anymore, and then hook your hose back up and put a whole new thing of hose in it. Okay. Put a whole new thing. Oh, just dump more oil into it. That makes sense. That'll that'll empty out all what about with an inch or so in the bottom of the reservoir. That'll get you enough of a changeover. Yeah. Awesome. Other than that, you're turning that thing over. Yeah. And having you know two guys trying to hold it while you <laughs> dump it and not spill it. Yeah, so. trying to dump that whole reservoir. Wow. Yeah. Well, again, appreciate you joining us. Oh, today. I appreciate it's it. Been Thank fantastic. You very much. So, and uh, thanks to uh, to Bonnie uh, coming along from Video Pivot and uh, sharing with us today and helping uh, capture all this. Um, stay tuned. We'll have some, uh, some upcoming episodes on a lot of different things with, uh, with XC technology and XC tech. Um, got a lot of unique things, um, that are out there. Um, hopefully, uh, get a chance to like and subscribe to our channel as we start to open, uh, some new lines there and hopefully we'll excite some folks. Uh, I know for me, I looked out and there's a lot of great videos, uh, by Newsbomb on, uh, factory videos, which I think were fantastic about the product. Uh, hopefully this is a chance for people to actually see you know, a more hands-on. I know uh, my buddy Matt down at Obsessed Garage, you know, the work you did exactly. with that as well. I think, again, this really shows, uh, you know, the overall quality of the product, the folks that are behind it, uh, and the capabilities. I think that's very unique for, uh, for folks and obviously for the right customers that are maybe a little more discerning or looking for a quality product, you know, for the money they're spending. Um, this is it's fantastic. We're looking forward to it. So. Yep. I appreciate it, sir. Yep. Thank you Thank very, you. very, very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, Byron.